involving local forces. This is about 20 minutes. I can, uh, I can hear you. Uh, you're loud and uh, pretty clear. Okay, sir. Uh, you as well. Uh, good morning, all here, and uh, good evening in Afghanistan. Uh, it's my great pleasure to welcome you and to introduce you to Marine Major General Richard Mills. Uh, General Mills is the commanding general of the recently formed Regional Command Southwest uh, in Afghanistan. General Mills assumed his duties in Afghanistan on June 14th this year. Uh, and uh, assumed his duties as the first commander of RC Southwest a few weeks ago on July 3rd. Uh, this is his first time joining us in this format, uh, the first of many, we hope. Uh, and he joins us today from his headquarters uh, in Camp Leatherneck in Helmand Province. Uh, General Mills will make some opening remarks, and then he will take your questions. General Mills, with that, we'll turn it over to you, sir. Well, good evening. Uh, as I was introduced, I am Major General Rich Mills. I'm a United States Marine and currently assigned as the commander for Regional uh, Command Southwest. Uh, my U.S. responsibilities, I'm the Commanding General of the uh, First Marine Expeditionary Force Forward and the Commanding General of the First Marine Division. Uh, the headquarters here is a combined headquarters. In addition to the uh, U.S. personnel that we have, I have nearly 100 uh, uh, officers from the United Kingdom filling uh, various uh, very key posts on my staff. Uh, I also have uh, members of other members of the, uh, of the NATO Alliance uh, filling jobs on, this, on the staff, and they've been here since we, uh, since we stood up in early uh, July. As you know, in response to President Obama's decision in December to increase U.S. force levels, this command was formed and began to employ and uh, began to deploy in March. On 12th April, we relieved the uh, USMC Brigade that uh, was in Helmand Province, and we spent our initial uh, 45 days or so uh, as a subunit of Regional Command South working for Major General Nick Carter of the, uh, of the British Army. Uh, in one June, in preparation for becoming an independent uh, regional command, uh, we undertook command of uh, uh, Task Force Hellman, uh, the UK Brigade, and that came under our command on the, uh, in early June. Currently, we're focused on operations within the uh, central Hellman River Valley. It's key ground. The bulk of nearly 0.5 million residents of Hellman Province live here. Progress here has been steady. Uh, I look forward to progress to continue to uh, uh, show improvement over the, over the coming months, and I think we'll expand rapidly in the months ahead. Regarding the uh, northern part of our AO, again, much progress has been made there, and I anticipate more, more progress in the months ahead. All that we do here in the, uh, in the areas of our partner operations, we remain closely allied with our, our Afghan partners. Uh, we have seen continuous progress with them. Uh, and we work with all of the Afghan security forces uh, and have, have been very, very pleased at the uh, increase in their capability, increase in their manning level, and the increase in the equipment with which they, uh, they operate. I would remind you that the price paid and that continues to be paid within this area has been steep. But the Helmand Valley is key ground to the insurgency. We can expect the insurgents to defend it strongly, and they have. But they have done so at a very high cost to themselves. They are consistently being pushed back further and further away from the various district centers. They are being pushed further and further away from the, the river and the very important narcotic growing areas that they've been used for years to fund the insurgency. And they are consistently being separated from the population, both by our efforts, by the efforts of the Afghan security forces, and by the efforts of the Afghan government, both from the national level and from the local level. Now, as I've said before, though, there is still much hard fighting left to do. And there are still improvements in the Afghan security apparatus that need to be made. But our progress is steady. Our troops are the best in the world. They operate extraordinarily well in a coalition environment. They naturally function as part of a team. I have found all of the uh, coalition forces to partner extremely well with the local forces, both with the police and with the Army. And they have embraced their uh, Afghan counterparts as fellow warriors. All of the coalition forces here understand their mission, and their motivation remains high. They are extremely focused. I appreciate this opportunity to talk with you, and I welcome your questions. Thank you, General. Ann? Um, General, this is Ann Flaherty with Associated Press. I'm wondering if you can give us the st a status update on Marja. General McChrystal had called it a bleeding ulcer. I'm wondering if you agree with that, and if so, what that says about the U.S. strategy for a clear hold and build.
Yeah, I get, Marsha uh, reflects the progress that's been made throughout the province. Uh, I would uh, just like to say that if Marsha six months ago was uh, a completely Taliban-controlled environment. Coalition forces could not approach it, nor could they fly over it. Uh, anyone not uh, involved with the insurgency who approached Marsha drew fire and drew very accurate fire. It was an environment that is very, very important to the insurgency, both psychologically as a, uh, a very hotbed of the, uh, their beliefs and uh, where they drew their forces from, but perhaps most importantly as, the, uh, as a true center of their financial uh, support. It was an area in which they forced local farmers to grow narcotics, which they harvested those narcotics, processed those narcotics, and then smuggled them out of the country uh, to Europe and to the United States in order to support the insurgency with the funds they need to buy the, uh, the lethal IED-making materials they have, the weapons they have, and to pay the warriors that they put on the battlefield. Uh, the the uh, uh, insurgency claimed when the uh, coalition forces approached that they would die in the trenches rather than give up Marja in a very, very dear fight. Of course, we all know that that fight didn't, uh, didn't occur. The forces drifted away were, uh, when they were uh, uh, taken on by the coalition forces, and we had initial success on the battlefield. Since then, we have seen, again, steady progress in the security situation uh, in Marja. Today, as I, as I talk to you, there is an emerging police force down there. It has some uh, 140 members. It patrols in the streets. It runs checkpoints for security measures and enforces not only the uh, uh, the, the basic laws expected uh, to operate within a town, but it also fights the insurgency when it's called upon and when it's attacked. Additionally, there are elements within Marja of the National Police Force who have shown themselves to be talented, skilled, and brave as they take on the insurgents that remain. Of course, I myself have uh, two battalions of Marines that remain in Marja, helping with the security duties, uh, working with the local forces to improve their, uh, their capacities, and uh, again, with the progress that we have seen in that area, has been, uh, I, I believe, steady and uh, very, very positive. Uh, are there still insurgents with it or in the area? Of course there are. It is very, very key ground to the insurgency. It is not a city in which they are going to give up easily, but they are being forced to give it up, and they are becoming desperate. We are beginning to see more and more uh, of that desperation reflected in the weapons and the tactics they use against us within the city. They come in in the uh, evening, uh, they plant their IEDs, and they try to spread terrorism throughout the, uh, both our forces, but more importantly, I think, among the civilians who live in Marja. Uh, the Marja people are simple farm people. They work hard, and they, uh, they expect very little to be, uh, to be given to them. And they, uh, when they move through the city to go to the bazaars, they're open now. When they move through the city to go to the schools, they're open now, to include schools for girls. They encounter the enemy's IED, a lethal, cruel weapon that does not pick out its victims. It simply strikes. The number of children, the number of women, the number of innocents that we treat in our medical facilities as the result of IEDs within Marja uh, is unacceptable. The enemy is desperate. We see that in his murder and intimidation campaign. He has very little else to offer the people of Marja other than threats. When he ran Marja, there were no schools. They'd been destroyed. When he ran, there were no health clinics. They'd all been closed. When he ran Marja, there was no local government other than Taliban. When he ran Marja, the bazaars were closed, and he destroyed most of the buildings that made up the bazaars. Now, as we begin to see an emergent civil government in Marja, as we begin to see a local police force take on civil responsibilities, as we see the uh, Afghan army take on more and more of their own security responsibilities, uh, we have some 800-plus shops within the bazaars that are open and are quite busy on market day. We have freedom of movement by the people of Marja as they move about. It's, it's a basically a rural uh, farming area. It's not an urban area that you would think of, as, as, but rather a, a grouping of, of homes on large farms. The people move freely throughout the area, of course, always subject to the enemy's uh, choice of uh, IEDing their, their roads and the narrow paths in which they use. So I would say to you that, that Marja, if you stay here and you observe it over the long haul, you would see progress. Uh, the people who seem to be disappointed are those who come and go uh, and only take a day or so to observe. But the people who stay around report steady progress. Jeff. Thank you. Uh, Jeff, uh, this is Jeff Shogel with Stars and Stripes. Uh, the Afghan government recently approved local police forces, uh, and I'm wondering if any of your troops are going to be partnered with